Hey everyone, thanks for uh, tuning in again today. Uh, today I'm going to be starting the install on my Old Air Products Hurricane uh, Complete Air Conditioning Kit. Uh, Old Air Products is a company uh, located not too far from me in Fort Worth, Texas, and they sell these 100% kits ready to install into the 1965 to 1966 Ford Mustangs. I used to have the under air unit. Uh, you saw that in one of the previous videos getting pulled out and uh, it just, it never cooled right. Uh, it just didn't work real well and I've always wanted one of these and so I finally picked one up finally. Um, Old Air sends some really good instructions but I figured a video might help explain things better for those um, that are installing this themselves. Some of the parts in here get a little bit tricky, a little bit uh, confusing with just the words they're using. So we're gonna do this together and document the process. Uh, the first thing they say uh, to do is you disconnect the ma negative battery terminal. Well, I don't even have my stuff hooked up. Uh, remove the glove compartment, remove the original heater, heater control, and control cables. Well, glove compartment's gone, original heater's gone. I need to remove my heater controls right here. It's just two bolts. And then I've got the original heater assembly right here pulled out. As you can tell, uh, when I first restored the car, uh, we had the box on the end re replaced because the old one was cracked, but this is actually still the original, I think it's just even fiberglass, but motor still works. It was a bit noisy. Uh, you know, the, the vents, they, they were still nice and fluid. It's just, this whole unit does not need to be here anything, uh, not, not, doesn't have to be used anymore. Uh, I got some small cracking up here, but only thing you're gonna reuse is, if you want to, your original heater hoses. And I'm, I'm probably gonna go ahead and just clean these up and reuse them. They're probably gonna have to be cut to fit anyways because of the mounting locations on the, on the new uh, heat and air conditioning system. And that's actually another cool feature of this system is it's a combined air conditioning and heat that you control uh, through the uh, heater, original heater controls. So uh, the heat will come out of the vents, uh, unlike the original air conditioning system, which was only vent and air conditioning. Um, <clears throat> what they also said to do is remove your dryer and driver and passenger side air ducts. Those are the ones, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, you can't. They're located underneath the dash in each corner of the vehicle. Uh, that one over there has uh, expanding foam in it because I, the door rusted open and I couldn't get it closed. We're gonna have to clean that up on my car before uh, installing the seal off plates. So anyways, we're gonna get started here. Um, in my instance, because I'm installing a full air conditioning system, even though I've had one in here before, uh, everything's out of here because I repainted the engine bay uh, and got everything all cleaned up. New, new engine wiring everywhere. I ran it to the outside of the car through the fender to clean up the engine bay a little bit more. And I'm waiting on a bunch of parts, as you can tell, to come back. Uh, they, are, they are being powder coated in the new paint color that I'm gonna be painting this car. So like my shock tower caps and my Monte Carlo bar and the export brace, they're all being powder coated right now. So this is the perfect time for me to install the air conditioning system while all this stuff is out. But they, they did recommend that you remove the, uh, the, uh, the cooling system. So I've removed my, great, my old condenser, my radiator, uh, hood latch, brace and horn. So basically you have to take off the front of your car. Obviously I've gone a little bit further because again, this car is getting uh, body work and paint, but uh, you have to take off a lot of stuff to, to install this brand new system because it does not follow the original uh, holes. Like these heater holes, they're gonna be patched and that original pass through for the air conditioning, that won't be used either. Everything goes through the original um, heater motor uh, hole location. So. Anyways, we're gonna get started. Uh, first thing you gotta do is we got to install the block off caps over the fresh air vents. So that's what these things are for. So we're gonna get started on these and install them. All right guys, so here we have the fresh air cap. Uh, it's got this tacky adhesive here. I, it's more like a, I don't know, you would like headlight sealant or something. It's tacky and smushy and you can just smush it up into the hole. And the instructions call for two of these screws, but the pictures clearly go three, show three, but uh, you're gonna install it with three of these self-tapping screws. So we're gonna get down there and I'll show you what, how, how to do it. All right, so just take the cap, just smush it there. They say, make sure there's no debris or anything, which will help this thing adhes ad adhesive, adhesive? Attach, we'll just go with attach, to the bottom there. So once it's there, 
Um, these are eight millimeter screws, self tappers. And I'm just gonna put it there on the outside. That's one. I, mean, I guess you could do it with two, but they gave you six. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use three. But that is never coming out again. It's nice and sealed. Yeah. Okay. So that's installed. Do the same thing for the other side. We don't need a video of that. And then we can move on to the next step. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is going to attach the mounting bracket to, to the entire assembly here. So you're going to get out this, this package here and open it up. And it says to install or mount the bracket to the unit using four one quarter inch by two inch bolts and the flat washers, which are conveniently located inside the bag. So real easy, straightforward, here we go. Okay, it's installed. Now notice I did it only by hand tight. I did not use power tools. I'm just gonna get a socket and snug these up, but I, it, this is, this looks like 3D printed material or very thin plastic, which I mean, it doesn't need to be super strong. You just hang them to the dash, but I would not recommend using power tools on this. You, even though the stud receivers are metal, everything else is plastic and you don't wanna crack it. This is very expensive, so you don't wanna mess it up by using power tools. This uses a 7 16 inch socket. I'm just gonna crank until it's snug. And that's good, I mean, really, it, it doesn't take much. The, the washer should prevent anything from uh, rattling or working its way loose from the vibration of the car. Trust me, my car vibrates. It's got a cam in it. All right, nice and secure. The next thing we have to do is we have to temporarily mount this very loosely uh, back in the car. So we're gonna go over there and install it loosely. All right, so here's the unit installed, and uh, I highly recommend having someone help you. I actually had to call my wife out here because um, I could not get all four studs through at the same time. The biggest problem was this one, the passenger side uh, lower bolt. It was actually off, like over by a quarter of an inch, and I had to hammer it in in order just to get it to fit through. But uh, as of right now, we're just loosely installing it so we can mark where the drain tube is gonna be. It's for the condensation of the air conditioner. You don't want that pooling in your floorboard so go back inside we're going to see where the drain tube is on the floorboard and we're going to cut a one and a quarter inch hole or drill a one and a quarter inch hole for the condensation tube to empty out from the floorboard so let's go get it up all right now that we're back <clears throat> inside the car what i did is i took my awl and i scratched you can see right here scratched an x x marks the spot where you can see where the drain tube comes that's a one and a quarter inch hole and there's a grommet to put in here and then the drain tube goes through your floorboard. But uh, so um, we're going to we're going to drill this out. They did not include a one and a quarter inch hole saw in the kit. So what I bought was the Milwaukee one and a quarter inch hole dozer. It's made for metal. It was a $15 after tax at my local Home Depot. Lowe's has it cheaper for a different brand like Craftsman was like 11 or 12. I don't know if it came with this. A bit attachment or not. So I just bought the complete kit that way I can just drill it out and be done with this right now. So I'm gonna put this on my drill. We're gonna remove the unit from out of the car because that's why I said just install it loosely so you can get an idea. We're gonna cut the hole in the floorboard and then we're going to uh, install the grommet and the uh, drain tube. All right, so this is the grommet they give you. Uh, it's a one and a quarter inch grommet as well. So they say to place this into the hole you just created. Uh, 
All right. It's a tight fit, which is what it's supposed to do. You want it watertight. So now let's get our uh, condensation drain tube and we're gonna install it. All right, we have the hose right here and you want the end that has the staple uh, at the end of it where it's kind of oval, you want that through the hole first. Now the instructions don't say to put it here right now, but I'm just putting it there so I don't lose the piece. The next thing we're gonna do is put the thermostat and the air inlet grill on the actual unit itself. So we're gonna head back to the table. Okay, so back here with the unit outside of the car after you removed it to uh, drill your one and a quarter inch drain hole, what we have here is the parts that came in this bag. Uh, the inlet grill with thermostat for 6,000. That's the bag and it has two things in it. It has your thermostat and it has the inlet grill. And they're already pre-attached, you don't have to worry about it. The only thing it does is it is not long like this, it's coiled around this. So what I did is I've straightened it all the way out. The instructions say to uh, bend it about two inches in from the end and you're gonna stick this whole assembly through this hole at the top here and down. And they say about a half inch up centered front to rear. And I actually kind of have a template already here. It's a little bit off center, but I'll go ahead and use what they want. So you'll stick it through this piece of paper right here in, and it's gonna come up the top here and you're gonna coil the excess and then you're gonna snap this grill cover on over it. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, wasn't the best job, but you know, I got it done. And what they say is to adjust the thermostat, there's an indent so you can turn it and when you feel it pop into the indent, you can hear it click, you're done. So, inlet's in, it's ready to go, moving on to the next step. All right guys, here is the whole heater panel removed. Uh, it, like I said, it's just these two bolts on the back, they are 3 8 um, and the whole thing pulls out. Uh, we're gonna have to replace some stuff on here install some some new gear And so we're gonna do that right now But uh, here's a video of me crawling up underneath the dash and so you can see how it's installed from the inside of the car All right guys, I somehow smashed my six foot two 200 pound frame Behind my dash uh, don't ask me how I'm gonna get out but for now. I want to show you how to remove the heater controls um, You have to remove the whole plate assembly. It makes things a lot easier there's this uh, nut up here at the top. And you have a nut down here at the bottom. You have to remove these. I believe it's a 3 8 inch. And you need to remove both of those uh, nuts in order to get the, the plate loose and you can pull it out. So remove both of those nuts and then pull from the front. All right, so the instructions actually tell you to go ahead and loosely reinstall the unit to your firewall. Actually, I think this is a bad idea and for two reasons. One, as you previously saw, I had to cram myself up underneath the dash in order to pull this, the, uh, the thermostat controlling unit or temperature control unit. And there's no way that if I reinstall this up underneath the dash that I can stick my body and my head up underneath the dash to reinstall this. So what I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these old cables, I'm gonna remove the old wiring, we're gonna install the, uh, the AC switch and the new wiring, and I'm also gonna install new cables. There's nothing wrong with my old cables. They're the original ones, so they're a little bit you know, rusty, but it's better to go ahead and use the brand new lubricated cables that have no problems. But we're gonna install all this first, get this retrofitted, put it back in the car, and then we're gonna reinstall the unit. That way there's no problems with me sitting up in there. All right, so I have my 5 sixteenths and the, all three, uh, cables have 5 sixteenths on them, as well as these two down here. This is where we're going to install the switch. So go ahead and get these removed. And uh, one of these cables, I believe it's the middle one, will not be reused. We'll confirm that in just a second here. But go ahead and get everything disconnected. You also need an Allen wrench uh, to take out this Allen wrench here, because we're going to have to pull the knob off to get the electrical switch through. Thank you. 
Okay, let me get an Allen key wrench for that. All right, he's got a T-handled one. This is the two millimeter, and it seems to fit real well. So I'm just loosening this Allen key right here, or Allen nut. So this entire thing can most likely be discarded or set aside. Don't discard anything. So I'm just going to throw it in the bag. I'm not throwing anything away from this car until it is fully restored. All right. So now that that's done, what you're going to do is you're going to install your bracket. So what I'm going to do. Just like that. And you want it to be able to, you want this thing when it goes down to trigger the switch. So, actually, that's heat. Heat needs to trigger it. So, I'm gonna hold it down all the way, get it into position. This needs to go through the slot. It might be kind of funky getting it all to line up. Let me get it all lined up and I'll come back. Okay, so uh, I went ahead and did everything as you can obviously tell. Uh, it wasn't super intuitive. The, the instructions say to, uh, on this page back here, it says to install it, you have to remove the screws attaching the rear lever bracket assembly a face of control. A line switch mounting bracket with holes and attach factory screws. Well, that that's really confusing what they're trying to say. What they're basically saying is take these two screws out right here and drop the switch. The switch comes loose from the rest of the bracket. You need to install the bracket right here using the factory screws. So what you need to do is you take these two factory screws out right here and that disconnects everything. You'll uninstall these two screws, put just the bracket in first. Then you'll want to attach the, the screw or the, the switch onto this bracket. But my problem is, as you can tell, it's kind of angled downwards. This the switch doesn't work real well. The, the factory one is really long and it's got the correct curve in it, but it's really long. This one's short. And so what I had to do is I had to bend the ears. Let's see if I can try to get this, this in here. I had to bend these ears right here. And I had to bend them down so I can get them to where I could bend the the switch down and make it flush and, and shoot the uh, the switch out somewhat level, but as you can tell, it's still not 100% level, but sitting in the car, you're not going to notice anything from the driver's position or even passenger position. It's only if you come out and look at it from the side. So once I install that, you got to make sure it activates the heat switch. So it does. You do need to use these cables. These are not the same length cables as the factory ones, which I have now tossed on the floor. This one's extra long. Uh, it's longer than anything ca that came in the 66. So use the super long one on the heat. And there is a shorter one right here. I didn't measure it, but I went ahead and assumed we needed to use both of them. So I put both cables in. And again, it, it not a very good setup because the, this cabling right here is a larger gauge than the holes, or just barely than the holes that are on the original 66. Maybe it's just my switch and it had rust or something in there, but I had to kind of clean this hole out and punch it through. And even then, this I had to make these bends. I had to take a pair of pliers and bend this into an S. The, the original bend was, was not very good, um, and it wouldn't go in there without punching it in there. Then you take your brown cable or your brown plug and snap it in there. And it, it takes a lot of force, but you want to you wanna get it on there until you hear it snap. Uh, so at this point, it's all ready to go back in the car. Uh, there are some instructions um, about which wires go where. Um, the final thing right down here is reinstall the car, I believe. Yeah, number six, install control in the dash. So we still, at this point, you can put it into the car. And at that point, you need to hook everything up right here. So that's the next step we're gonna do. But uh, this wasn't easy. Uh, it wasn't exactly hard. It's just trying to figure out their instructions and then trying to meld you know, 2020 technology to 1966 technology. And it works. Um, in hindsight, I kind of wish I'd gotten the electrical one. They're, they have an electrical model where it replaces this whole thing um, with an electrical one. And you just plug a couple of plugs in and you're done. There's no more cables or anything like that. You get a brand new everything, just plug it in and go. 
But uh, you know what? I wanted to see how this model worked and I'm, ho I'm betting more people went with this model than the electric one because this is about two to $300 cheaper than the electrical uh, uh, switch model. So it is ready to go back into the car. Um, we do need to cut a hole into the newly wrapped vinyl dash because I just vinyl wrapped over everything. So we're gonna have to make a slice in it and get this installed. We're gonna have to figure out how to get these these retaining nuts to work to where it's um, retained by the dash. So this is gonna get interesting and then we're gonna work on the electricals to get it hooked up into the heater box. So once this is installed and mounted, we're just gonna leave all these cables and everything loosely hanging and then install the main AC and heat unit to the firewall. All right, so now that we're back in the car, put that down. What we are going to do is, so I just vinyled over, this is where the ashtray was, and this is where the HVAC or heater controls go. And so I'm gonna have to make a cut, a square cut in here, but not too much so I can actually bend the folds of the fabric back. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the ashtray back in. I've never used it and I like this clean clean look across it, but we'll, we'll see. But for now, I'm gonna make some small cuts here, fold the fabric in, and then I've got the unit right here. I got the screws backed off here and here. Feed all of this stuff through, try to get this index point correctly, and then we're gonna try to crawl, <laughs> crawl up underneath the dash again and wedge myself up underneath there so I can actually see what's going on. So here we go. Okay, so I'm coming to you from the future. Um, so before you reinstall this whole panel back into your car with a micro switch attached, make sure you've actually hooked up your micro switch wires. I didn't. Uh, I guess that's what I get for going out of order a little bit. Basically, you have a black switch or a black wire that comes off your harness that goes to the communication switch. Plug that in. You also have a normally open wire, it's the dark blue wire that connects here and it goes to the relay. And then there is a ground uh, that comes off of the, the black wire as well. Um, the instructions say to ground it to the blower switch, so the switch that control or secures this thing in. I didn't do that since I have I had to do this after the fact and it's already installed. Uh, there's the two screws, one here and one, and one here that bolt this entire uh, temperature control unit into the dash. I just grounded it to that. In fact, it seemed like a better ground than these because these are just, it's flimsy screws that are holding this thing in uh, on the backside. So I actually bolted it and grounded it to uh, what holds this thing into the dash. And it's, it's old steel and it goes straight to the metal frame of the dash. So that's what I did. But I'm coming to you in the future to prevent you from doing the same mistake I did. Hook up your wires first, then install uh, this whole thing back to the dash. So it turns out I had too much material covering the index holes. I had actually cut out a whole lot more, but now I've got this point indexed and I'm gonna crawl up underneath there from behind and attach these uh, brackets and screws. Uh, I had to take them off as well as they were interfering. So, you know, it just, it sucks getting up underneath there, but it's what's required to do this. So here we go. Hey, there we go. I can maybe tuck some of this material in. For the most part, looks good. There's one slight cut mark here, but I think again, let's shift that over a little bit, tuck that in. You'll never notice. Awesome, it's installed. All right, just to get up underneath here, and show you what I had to do to get this installed. I had to move, oh man, I don't even know if I can do this. I had to move this out of the way. I had to bend, bend it. And that allowed me to get this top screw on. The bottom one was fine. It's installed right there, right there. And so they're both secure, but you have to move the switch and then I'm gonna 
bend it back, get up and over there. So now it's flush or flat and I can actually make sure you can use all three modes of the switch. So one, two, three. So all three work. So just make sure you can move it all the way, but I had to bend it out of the way to get that screw secured and then bend it back. Also, in addition to all of the material I had to cut away, I had to modify the retainer bracket here. As you can tell, I just cut a small section away, made it open up a little bit more. The, uh, the bracket that the switch is mounted to, the switch up here on the top, is square and was interfering with this and I couldn't get this to tighten down without bending the switch out of the way. And if I bent the switch out of the way, I couldn't bend it back down once I installed this. So I cut a small section away and uh, that allowed me to install it. All right, so here it is installed and back underneath the dash. And basically I made a cut right here. So this corner right here, the top of the bracket can slide down past this cage nut that retains it to the dash. Ideally, you would actually want to round off the, not this corner, but the corner that's down and you can't see it, round it off to where it's not interfering it. But, you know, making a slice in the cage nut works just fine. And uh, what you want to do when you're under it here is two things. One, you want to make sure the switch goes all the way. So this is off. One, two, three. And you want to make sure that's nice and good. Second thing is make sure it still activates the AC switch. So you'll hear the click. So everything is installed. Next thing I gotta do is I gotta install the box to the firewall and then we can start getting uh, this wiring hooked up. But uh, that's how you install the uh, heater controls with the AC module and switches back installed into the dash. All right, so what I've got to do next is I've already pulled my drain tube back out. And what I have up here is this grommet. I, I drilled through the floorboard. This is where the condensation drains out of. Uh, the, this can stay here, the firewall pad, but I need to drill a hole through this carpet and underlayment. Uh, that way, when I install the box here in a minute, this thing will already be installed in the box and just go straight through. So let me get my drill bits. I'm just going to drill straight through the carpet and underlayment, and that way we can get the box installed. Drain, drain tube is installed through the carpet. Time to get the box. Okay, got it installed, mounted to the firewall. Uh, instructions say loosely mounted, and so that's what I've done. It's just, it's hanging here. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I have the old heater holes right there, uh, where the old heater hoses used to come in. They supply you with these, these caps to put on there. And then we're gonna put the rubber grommet that seals the old heater hole motor location. So there's gonna be a grommet that goes around this thing right here. So let's get those installed. There we go, grommet is installed. All right, so the next step is to install your expansion valve. That's this little gizmo right here onto the lower fitting. It's this brass one down here. Uh, you have to use the number eight O-ring, which is right number in there. I think it's the larger of the two and the, the oil is included as well. Just to warn you, uh, when you pull off this plastic fitting that's on the lower grom or lower fitting, uh, <laughs> this thing is vacuum sealed or it has a, had a vacuum pulled on it. So, uh, it's going to pop on you and air is going to rush in. So you're opening the system up. So just be careful. It's going to pop on you and suck a bunch of air in. Um, and also the instructions say use a five eighths and seven eight seven eighths inch wrench, uh, to tighten this up. Well, I couldn't even get five eighths does not fit either one of these fittings. Uh, so I had to use a uh, adjustable spanner or wrench and a pair of lock channels to get it off. 
So I don't know what wrenches they're using, but it's, it's not 5 8 and 7 8 So let's get these installed. you will use a 5 8 inch wrench. I uh, didn't realize this was a smaller fitting over here, so I'm gonna get my wrench here. And I'm gonna tighten this down. So just to follow up, I had to call Old Air Products and I had to ask where this bottom fitting goes. And the guy recommended when he does his installs, he points it straight down because a 90 degree fitting will come in and up. So your hose will be right here and it'll attach here. So I had it straight down and tightened. Also, don't over tighten this as I read in the instructions. 10 to 20, sorry, 11 to 20 foot pounds. Yes, 11 to 20 foot pounds. So don't over tighten it because you will crush the O-ring that's in there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is get this bent up to here and put a clamp on it as well. The clamp will go like this, like that. Next, you're going to take the insulation they provide. I'm going to cut about this much off and wrap the pigtail assembly in the clip. Before that, though, I'm going to tighten down these because I'm losing my grommet here and I think it's just not drawn far enough out. So I'm going to tighten these bolts down and try to pull it smooth. Okay. Yeah, that, uh, that helped a lot more. I didn't have these things fully tightened down. So make sure you are all the way tightened down and bringing the unit as far out as you can because now my grommet is working correctly. What I'm going to do is try to slip it through here, wrap the first section, and then try pulling the uh, backing off here real quick. Ta-da. Really smash it down. The instructions say if you do not do this right, you'll get inconsistent temperature. So make sure it's completely sealed. And there you go. That's the expansion valve installation. Moving on. What we need to do now is we need to attach the defrost and AC heat cable. So this is the defrost cable coming from the defrost level, which is the furthest one on the right. What they say is to attach to this spot right here and then put it right here and you'll clamp it in there in a second but you want to make sure that this cable opens and closes uh, these defrost vents uh, fully so make sure you don't push it too far forward or push it too far back but you want to get it to where the lever and the all the way up position closes i'm sorry opens and all the way down closes it so i'm going to get this uh, installed real quick and i'll show you what it looks like all right so here it is with the defrost cable installed as you can see, when I move the defrost cable, it fully opens it and extends it back. And when I close it, there is no gap. What you can do is stick your fingers up in here and make sure there's no gap and there isn't. Basically, this needs to be as far back this direction or back towards the back of the car as you can so it has a, a good amount to clearance and move back and forth. But yeah, defrost cable is installed. And how I routed it is I just shoved it up and bent it over and it's sitting on top of the dash right here. So that way it's not hanging down because originally it was just hanging down and coming out over here. So tuck it up underneath the bottom of your dash right here. Also go ahead and run your AC heat cable, the longer one right here, out the old uh, AC hose hole. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this or not. Uh, there's no other holes really to go through at this point, uh, but you're gonna have to run it out there for your uh, heater bypass valve to control your heat and AC that's done at a later step. But for now, I'm going to try this. We're going to see how it works out. All right, so we're going to start doing the wiring now. Um, so they give you this pretty cool diagram here. 
Um, makes some sense for me anyways, I'm not a big electrical guy, but the easiest way to start is your three prong here, goes to the top up here, just plug it in like that. So I'm gonna install it, I'm gonna look at the instructions, see where we go from there. So here it is plugged up together. It was a very, very tight fit. Uh, so just push on it until it finally snaps together or pushes together. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is install two, they call them light blue cables to me, they look turquoise or green, to this uh, connector right here. And I'm gonna explain it first and then I'm gonna show it. The one closest to that uh, vacuum sensing tube is the one that's gonna go to your integrated controls. The one behind it or closest to the firewall is gonna go out to the pressure safety switch that we have not installed yet, but it'll be in the engine bay. But I know that may sound confusing, so let me show you. They even, they bound them together. <clears throat> they both say T-STAT. The one that comes from this uh, relay right here that goes into your controls. That's this first one. Let me pull it all together. All right, it's this one. That one's gonna plug in, you can't see it real well, but this first section, or this first closest one. Uh, and then what you're gonna do is take this second one and put it on the one behind it, and that's loose. It just, it has a secondary connection right here. And that's gonna go through your firewall to your pressure safety switch that has not been installed yet. So just hopefully that explains it a little bit better. All right, so a tip that it's, it sucks to try to get this thing on there. Um, what I did is I took a flat bladed screwdriver and I stuck it into that prong and just barely widened them a little bit. These are really, really tight. So just widen them out just a little bit. It still goes on nice and tight, but uh, I wish we had put these on earlier um before i installed this box to the firewall it would have been a whole lot easier um but anyways stick a flat bladed screwdriver in there widen the prongs out just a little bit and then they slide right on okay so step number nine says connect the long orange wire with fuse ignition to a key on power source so what i wanted to do was use the bullet connectors uh, and plug it into my console wiring. I don't have a console, I don't plan on ever using this, um, but unfortunately 40s is 0.187s and I only had 0.156s. I do plan on eventually getting 187s and, and connecting this orange wire with the fuse that has this fuse into the bullet connector. But for now, I just use these really cool things called wire taps. They, uh, they, they don't destroy the original wiring, it just puts a small hole in it. Uh, and so I'm wire tapped into it. So I get 12 volts when the key is on and when I turn the key off, it turns off. Uh, so that's tapped in there. We can tuck this up and out of the way to where nobody can see it. Um, step 10, no, 11. Attach the black ground wire inlet to the body of the vehicle. So there weren't really some good choices for wiring under here. So what I did is right here, coming from underneath, is there's a mounting bracket right here. You can see right there. All I did was take a machine screw. I don't know the sizes. I was just trying to figure out what size it is, but here it is, it's hex uh, to install. But I took this machine screw, put it through the ground and shoved it up into this mounting bracket right here. And it's tight and it's not going anywhere. You may choose to ground it to a different place. Uh, that's completely up to you, but this was a convenient spot and uh, it worked really well and it's super, super tight. And so uh, if you can try finding that machine screw, I'm sorry, I don't have the measurement, but this is, this is what it looks like. It's pretty small and it's got a, a Torx bit to install it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test to see if the system works. So I got my keys here on and yep, it's low, medium, high. And let me tell you, they call this a hurricane for a reason. It is blowing lots and lots of air. I can feel it up underneath here, right here. It is way more powerful than the factory system. You will have a hurricane in your house or in your car. It's crazy. So anyways, works great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this wiring, zip tie it, get it up underneath the dash so where it's out, up and out of the way and it doesn't look ugly. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, handle that right now. I'll be right back. All right, real quick, I just wanna point out that there are two different sizes here. The one here on the top, the really, really long tube that you get with the kit, it is smaller than two and a half inches. The larger diameter is going to be your uh, defrost vent ducts. These are gonna go up on the top of the unit. So make sure you don't start cutting on the long one. This is for your vents for the dash inside the car. This is for the defrost. So just wanna point that out. They are different sizes. 
One of the next steps uh, before we start messing with the vents is to start installing your defrost tubes. You can tell this is a very sh short section. The instructions say to cut a small section and attach it, attach it to your uh, defrost outlet, which is all the way up here on the top of the unit. Uh, this is a little bit tricky. What I would recommend do is stretching out this end and the other end. And then it's kind of triangle shaped. I, can, I can't show it to you, but stretch it out real good and then using your fingers on the inside, push the back side in from within the tube. I uh, would also recommend uh, zip ties. I'm gonna go ahead and use two tied together because I don't have any long ones. Try to get some really long ones. And I would definitely try zip tying it around the base here just so you never ever have to do this again. So uh, that's the two and a half inch section. Um, what I'm gonna do now is we have this defrost splitter tube here. And what you're gonna do is basically attach it up in here into that and then you're going to run two defrost tubes from these outlets up into the car to the defrost outlets on your windshield uh, the instructions say don't use so much that it's sagging it'll interfere with the windshield wipers so keep it nice and tight that's why i use such a very small section on this but i would zip tie both sections here and once you get it on the defrost tube all right so it has been installed uh, everything's been zip tied um, in fact i had to zip tie the back one uh, twice. There was a lot of air leaking coming out of that. And I don't really understand why the hoses are circular and the splitter is oval. Uh, you'd think a splitter would better just with a two and a half inch and out, inlet and outlet, but it's on there now. Um, so first thing they say to do is to check, make sure these hoses are not interfering with your windshield wiper. So I don't hear anything hitting my hoses. They seem to be nice and clear. You, ob you obviously want them trimmed to where they're not sagging. And that's what I did is I, I, uh, I made sure I only cut exactly what I needed because the first time I tried installing these, I just had a ton sagging. You cannot keep this up. I was gonna Velcro this to the base and then actually interferes with this. So you just gotta leave it hanging loose here. But uh, with the zip ties and everything, it's actually pretty solid. Um, so now what I wanna do, Test. Test it. So I'm gonna turn my windshield wipers off. Turn this thing on. Oh, sorry. There we go. Off. All right. Oh yeah. Good amount of air coming out. Woo! Yeah. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting our vents in. One corner vent, one center vent, one corner vent over here. So let's go get started on that. So inside the car, when you're installing the ducts uh, onto the main uh, AC heat unit, uh, you, see, you can see the retention clips there on each side and they do a good job, but you have to get it over it. And so the best way is I'm going through my glove compartment for the passenger side. That's where I'm going to start first. If you bunch it up real good to where it's nice and solid, at that point you can just stab it on there and then it won't come off. So that's the easiest way. Don't try uh, taking one or two rings and then try slipping over. Just bunch it up real good and then just push directly onto the outlet of, for, for the ducting. And at that point you're basically pushing a big tube onto there that's nice and solid. Uh, I am still going to zip tie these. Um, just just to make sure they don't ever slip off. But three retention rings look like they're gonna do a pretty good job. But uh, that's how I install it. I'm gonna do the passenger side first, uh, simply because I wanna go from short to long. This is gonna be the shortest tube, and then the middle two will go to the center vents, which will be medium, and then the leftmost goes to the driver's side. I wanna absolutely make sure I have enough ducting to do the entire car. So we're coming to the final steps for the installation of the interior package. And again, it eventually will look like that. What you have here are your two side vents. And so this one's like your driver's side because it goes against the driver's side. And this is your passenger side because it goes against the passenger wall. Uh, then you have your center section, which is still in my plastic wrapping. But according to the instructions, you're basically gonna take out the screws that are in here and mark those locations and then drill through your dash. For the side pieces here, they have flanges on the side and underneath the, or above the vent. And what you'll need to do, and I actually have to get my kick panels back out because they're in the trunk, but you're actually gonna need to drill a hole through the top that goes through your dash, and then that flange, you'll drill a hole through that and it'll go into your kick panel. 
So uh, if you ever have to remove your kick panel, you'll have to remove your vent because it'll be attached to your kick panel. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my kick panels back out and put them back in the car, they're the speaker type. And then I'm gonna get this thing out and I'm gonna mark the holes and we're gonna drill them uh, into the dash. I have some unfortunate news that I just discovered. Those of us that have these uh, kick panel speakers for our classic Mustangs, it does not work with the system. You, uh, there is just no way to get this to sit on top of that speaker. It's, it's, it's a considerable amount. There's not even trimming. I'm not even gonna try to trim this. Um, you, you could possibly do it if you wanna mess this up. You could possibly get it to slip over, but uh, you know, I'm not in love with these kick panel speakers. They're, they're an easy, cheap solution to getting music back in your car. Um, so I'm actually gonna take these out and buy some just standard kick panel uh, for the Mustang. But if you have these uh, kick panel speakers and you want the system, just know this isn't gonna work. It is absolutely not going to work. So I went ahead and ran my ducting uh, down. And what I've done is I've routed it underneath the ground cable that we had put in earlier. That way you have nothing obstructing you. And it's it's not stretched, but it's not just, you know, tons of material in there. It's like I said, I won't have as much as I can. Got it down here attached and zip tied to the vent. And then you can see it's got plenty of room to go right there. So it's not, I'm not stretching that bad. So this is where its final location will be once I get my new kick panels in. Uh, it'll probably take a week or so. So I'm just going to leave this hanging here like this. But uh, you can see what it looks like when it's assembled and zip tied. And it, it does not take much at all. And you can see it's, it's not much at all. So that is the passenger side. We're going to go and start doing our drilling on the center. I can't drill this one because I don't know its final location because I don't know the the thickness of the kick panels and I can't get this to fit with the speaker one so we're just gonna have to leave drilling this for later but what you're gonna do for this one is you're gonna drill two holes somewhere along here um, behind where the uh, ashtray is obviously I have I've vinyl over my ashtray I've never used it I prefer the cleaner look anyways but you're gonna there's a lip right behind it and you're gonna drill two holes right there so let's get to that right now so for me to put this in, to make it somewhat simpler, I've actually taken this thing apart. Uh, it normally goes together kind of like that. These are 3 8 inch bolts with lock washers. And on the bottom are screws like that. Uh, just two screws right there. And you can split the unit apart. Take this unit, put it in your car, center it, and then that way you can kind of mark your dash. I'm just gonna use an awl or a screwdriver to kind of mark up the vinyl where I'm gonna be drilling through. And it's a lot easier to, to have it this way than trying to figure it out with the nuts and bolts together. So uh, that's what I did. You don't have to disassemble, disassemble it if you don't want to, but I've taken mine apart. I'm gonna take this into the car, mark my drilling locations and drill. All right, so I'm underneath my dash right now. Um, so I've got one hole kind of already chewed out. The other one's sitting right over here. Actually, I'm gonna move it back here. Um, just to show you guys, you cannot put a standard drill under here because of the transmission hump. I'm using the Ryobi One Plus HP, right hand, three eighths drill. And I have a four amp hour battery. This is the only way I've been able to get this fit up underneath here. So I'm just warning you, a normal drill will not be able to fit between the transmission tunnel here and the dash. So just giving you a heads up, if that's all you have, prepare a trip to Home Depot or Lowe's to get yourself a small right hand uh, drill, or right hand angle drill. But, uh, I'm gonna get drilling on this thing. Hopefully this thing being cordless can drill through you know, 50 something year old metal. So the hardest part of getting this center section in after drilling the holes is the fact that the, the bolts are so short that come through the dash into the unit. So what I ended up doing is turn it sideways to do the first one. And once you have it secured, turn it back in towards you. And it makes it easier to get the first one in. The second one, it's just gonna take determination and patience, uh, unfortunately. So 
that's how I did it. I drilled my holes. I wallowed them out a little bit just so the bolt would pass through a little bit easier. But uh, turn it facing sideways so you can see this hole a lot easier with some light coming from behind it. And once it's secured, turn it back towards you and try to get that second bolt in. And so the centerpiece is installed. I'll tell you, that was not fun and it was not easy. Uh, lots of contorting yourselves up underneath the dash and uh, having to wallow out the holes and get it drilled. But I did eventually get it uh, installed. And so, I mean, it looks good. It looks real good. Low profile. I'm eventually gonna have a custom fiberglass uh, console underneath here. So what I'm gonna do later is uh, put it in here and, and take some measurements between the uh, AC and the carpet and see how much room I have to make a console tray right here. But it's installed, so the next step is to run two new ducts from the unit itself on the firewall to the center. I have my two sections of hose run, one slightly shorter than the other, this one's slightly shorter than this. Same method, just coil it up real good and push hard and then kind of twist it left and right as well. And then what you do is you take your fingers and go all the way around the back. As long as you don't feel a gap, you're good to go. So what I'm gonna do is gonna take actually the one furthest from the box, this one, and put it on the left side. And then that way it gives me some working room to put the shorter one on the right side. So we're gonna do that now. All right, so the uh, ducks have been run. As you can see, they're attached. I am not zip tying these simply because if they ever do fall out, it's real easy to get your hand up underneath here and just put them back in. But like I said, they have retention points on each side. These are oval, so you have to squeeze it a little bit. And this way you can get your wiring and everything tucked up so that when you pull back, you don't see anything, except for maybe a duct from the side. But this, this is a good way to start your duct management, make sure it's not hanging down and uh, making it look nice and clean. So the last step now is I have a little bit ducting left. I say a little bit, I mean like a ton. I have a ton, which is good. That's the idea. You use as little as necessary. This will stretch all the way over to the driver's side and we'll put in the other vent here, but it'll have to hang because of the problem earlier of the kick panel speakers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, my ducting run over there and get it plugged into the back of the driver's side vent. The last duct to the driver's side has been run. Basically, I've run it over the defrost vents, but to low enough where it won't impact the windshield wiper arms. Behind where the radio is supposed to be, above the steering box, or I'm sorry, the windshield wiper, wiper motor, uh, behind where the instruments will be, over the steering uh, column and shaft, and then down just in front of my fresh air duct, which has been sealed up because it was rusted and I couldn't open or close it, so I just sealed it up. So. It comes down to right here. I'm gonna trim it right around there and I'm gonna install it onto the vent and leave it hanging. I'm gonna get replacement panels tomorrow. And we should be able to button up this install. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the vent and get it going. All right, I got in my new Scott Drake kick panels, just standard black kick panels. I've got my passenger side already installed. And so what I'm gonna do is just take this put it right there, screw into the top, and then screw in to the side of the panel. So I'm gonna get that uh, installed now. So what I'm doing to install these is, for some reason, when I put it up against here, you can see that it's a bad angle. They're not flush. Uh, there's no way to make the back flange flush with the kick panel. So I don't know why the instructions say to, to screw in here. Uh, neither, you know, Regardless, I, I needed to, to get new panels because the speakers were prohibiting this from getting there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do two screws. Uh, that'll keep it pretty secure. There's only two screws holding, or bolts really holding the center section, so this should be fine. What I've done is I've pre-drilled them into the louver and I've disconnected the hose. So I'm just gonna put it up here, drill it in, and then I'm gonna attach the hose from behind. And here is the passenger side installed. And so you can see, I've got my two screws here. It's pretty solid. The only issue I'm seeing is you can kind of pull it down and it kind of stays there. But I mean, you just, there's no way for this flange to be touching. The, I've got my fingers behind it. So I don't know if it's a design flaw or something wrong with my Mustang. I mean, there's supposed to be padding or something back here, but um, yeah, there's just no way to get a flange. Now what you can do is take a long screw and kind of bridge it into uh, the kick panel. But for now, I'm just gonna run two screws and 
it, it's fine. It, it really is fine. It looks good. And from back here, you can't tell a difference. And if a passenger adjusts it, it doesn't move. It doesn't move at all. So passenger side is installed. We're going to move to the driver's side. All right, so I'm having a problem on the driver's side. As you can tell, when I'm trying to put this into place, I'm hitting my fresh air vent back here on the small flange. I cannot get it up. I don't know if they didn't measure these right or, again, something could be up with my car, um, but I cannot get this to seat all the way up. Now, it could be at an angle, but then it's not gonna look the same as the passenger side. So something's off here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to cut down this little flange right here. It's not doing me any good and it's coming in contact with my now sealed up fresh air vent. So uh, I'm going to get to cutting that and I'm going to put it back in once it's cut up. And the driver's side is installed. I'll tell you, that wasn't easy. Um, let's see if I can get down here and show you. I had to cut out a pretty good section. I cut a little bit too much. But to get around my fresh air vent, I had to cut out a lot. Um, and I also have just a teensy, teensy gap on the side because it wouldn't go flush. There's something up here. I had to cut a small J cut out because of the kick panel. It has some sort of weird uh, section coming out of the kick panel uh, that attaches to the dash. I mean, I understand it keeps it secure. So I had to cut a small J out of it to make it fit flush, but it's installed. And from back here, you really can't tell. So the, uh, the air conditioning vents are installed. The next stage is to move under the hood and to start installing the compressor, lines, condenser, and uh, other accessories.